Hi everybody, my name is Brad Dunn, I'm the Key Relationship Manager for Momentum Wealth and the Mayor Property Fund and I'm joined here today by Phil Anderson, our Head of Developments. Hi Brad, how are you going everyone? Today we're going to be running through some of the most common questions that we get asked and we're also going to be providing you with an exclusive sneak peek to our new upcoming residential syndicate. First things first, let's start with one of our most commonly asked questions that we get. What is a property syndicate and how does it work? No worries. Look, it's, a, it's basically a group of investors that come together. They pull their funds to invest in one property, do a development, and then at the end of the development, say generally two to three years for a built form development, they get a return based on the percentage that they put into the syndicate at the start. Okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah. But uh, say you've got your own property, why, why would you go for a syndicate rather than just doing something yourself? Yeah, good question, Brad. Look, there's a number of benefits to doing it as a syndicate. First of all, you get access to a larger site. So someone with three, four hundred thousand dollars won't be able to go and buy a three, four, five, six million dollar site and do a 30 apartment development, for example. We'd all love to be able to do that in our own right, but it's it's not going to happen um, for most of us. So you get access to a larger scale development, um, and on top of that, you get, I guess, diversification as well. So instead of pulling your money into one property, you say three or four hundred thousand dollars, you could split that up into multiple syndicates, get access to different types of developments in different locations and I guess take the benefit of diversifying your risk to different sites um, and also you know potentially having involvement in different different sorts of developments. Diversification risk, that's a really important mitigant, but what other risks would generally be involved with something like this? Yeah look, good question Brad. So there are a few other risks that you might be um, exposed to through doing a development. It's not for everybody, there is a, a few higher risks than buying say uh, an existing asset like an existing house or an office building or something like that. However, on the counter side you do get higher returns. So some of the risks are, you know, um, there's development risk from cost blowing out, um, not being allowed for finance risks, not being able to get the funding or, or getting funding at a higher cost. Um, but at the same time, if you've got an experienced team and a developer that's done a similar project before, you'll try and mitigate those risks through, um, yeah, through good feasibility modelling and through due diligence. Okay, and what about the market risk? Yeah, so market risk is another one. So we'd all love to control the markets, be able to pick the, the ups and downs but uh, the reality is we won't do it perfectly. But what we can do is have a good research backing, have a strategic approach to the sites that we buy, and through that we'll buy sites with good fundamentals in good areas that we you know, will do really well in good markets, and in a downturning market perhaps may, may not do as well, but at least you'll preserve your capital and um, hopefully come back to find another day. So uh, experienced development manager, that'd be yourself, right? But That's right. Uh, <laughs> so One of the biggest questions I would definitely get is, you know, who's the team behind it. Yeah. So tell me more, why is management team so important? Yeah, look, that's the most important part of a development. I guess it's it's putting your money with someone who knows what they're doing. They've done the similar size scale developments before and delivered the returns in both a good and a bad market. So you don't want to give your money to someone who's doing it for the first time, like you wouldn't do a development yourself uh, for the first time. You give it to someone who's done similar developments in the past, delivered the returns, um, and you know, will continue to do so for the next project. Okay, now you mentioned before, it's not for everybody. Who would be suitable for this kind of product? Yeah. So look, as I said, there's a higher risk involved. So you need to be ready for a little bit of a higher risk, but at the same time, you get the trade-off of a higher return. Generally, it's people who have a larger asset base. Um, it's And I guess technically, it's got to be a wholesale or sophisticated investor, um, which is someone who does have a higher income or a higher asset base to start with. And that's something we can you know, fill you in in details if, if someone wants to know more about it. Okay, so tell me though, what, how much would they generally be putting into these kind of syndicates? Yep. So I guess coming back to that diversity, instead of having to put all your assets in, or all of your funds into one project, you can put smaller, smaller uh, portions in. So fifty to $100,000 is generally the minimum, um, and you know, there is no maximum, but you know, it gives you an opportunity to, to put in different syndicates. So, yeah. Actually, it's truly surprising. I meet a lot of uh, very high net wealth individuals on a day-to-day -day basis, and whilst they could potentially fill a four or five mil fund themselves, they only put 50 to 100 in because they see the value of diversifying across those funds. Yeah, that's right. So it's that diversity. You've got different, you're exposed to different assets who, which may have different rates of growth, and you know, one project may be better than another, but I guess over, over time you average out that return and you should have a, a profitable development. Speaking of profitable developments, come on, give us a sneak peek. What have we got coming up? Yeah, so we've got a great site under contract at the moment. It's a, a Northern Beaches um, iconic cafe. Uh, the potential there is a mixed use development. The cafe will go back in on the ground floor um, and then we'll build high end luxury apartments over, overhead um, with absolute oceanfront you know, views and, and access to the beach. So it's gonna be a great development. Um, we're in the process of doing our due diligence at the moment, doing that all important de-risking exercise to make sure all our assumptions are correct, prove up our costs, and, and hopefully uh, ensure that we get the returns we forecast. 
So for all you people out there that are probably going to try and guess where this iconic cafe is in the Northern Beaches area, feel free to guess. Can't guarantee we'll tell you though. <laughs> Good luck with the guesses. Thanks all. Bye.